Imagine a super cartel, a group of Europeans' largest drug lords that worked together and were responsible for one third of the entire cocaine trade in Europe. A group of men who would live lavishly in Dubai and pretended like the entire world was theirs. That group is now in serious trouble and some members might regret being part of the group as it just got clear that one of the members is becoming an informant. Rafael Imperiale, born on 24th of October 1974, is an Italian criminal and member of the notorious Italian Camorra Crime Syndicate. Authorities named him as one of the most important drug traffickers affiliated with the Camorra. He has spent years on the run, being on the most wanted list in Italy, but also across the entire European Union. As one of the top targets for law enforcement, he knew every day he spent in freedom could be his last. Unfortunately for him, that came sooner rather than later. When it came to an end, Raphael Imperial was stunned and could not believe what had just happened. But how did he become such a crucial figure in the drug trade? Back in the mid-90s, Imperial laid the foundation for his life full of crime. It started in Amsterdam where he opened a legitimate coffee shop slash sandwich shop called Rockland. It was nothing more than a legal cover-up for what he was actually doing. Till this day, you can still search for the company in the Dutch Chamber of Commerce. The address he was supposed to live in was a small flat somewhere in Amsterdam, which would definitely not fit his lifestyle. As the Italian he is, he also started an Italian restaurant in Amsterdam, which was actually a very good restaurant and delivered the best Italian dishes in town. In 2002, the restaurant got a 9 out of 10 score given by a famous food reviewer. While his legal businesses were up and running, Imperial was working even harder behind the scenes. He created strong ties with other criminals in Amsterdam through his coffee shop. Through these connections, he would slowly but surely enter the top of the XTC and cocaine trade. After the Netherlands, he moved to Spain for a short while. Ultimately, he would end up in Dubai, living a very luxurious lifestyle. In 2016, it made the headlines that the Italian police found a vault in a small house near Naples. Upon opening the vault, the police found two Van Gogh paintings that were stolen in Amsterdam 14 years ago in 2002. Upon further inspection, this was not just a regular small home near Naples, it was a small hideout owned by Imperiale. The police started conducting serious investigations into his life, and once Imperiale noticed that, he did something strange and unbelievable. He wrote a six-page letter directed towards law enforcement, actually admitting to a large-scale drug trafficking he offered Italian law enforcement to give back as written down in his letter. A hill with a farm on it and 10 luxury cars, he went on to say. This will be beneficial for the community and can be used to combat other organized crime in the country. Isn't that strange? A notorious drug trafficker who feels the heat of the police then pleads guilty to drug trafficking without being apprehended or in custody to then just freely give up his assets to the government. This is absolutely mind blowing. When he did this, he was hoping for a lighter sentence. But I am wondering, would you have done the same? Let us know in the comments. While he did plead guilty, he was not intending to give himself in or actually stop trafficking drugs. Imperiali had bigger plans. He was not stopping or backing down anytime soon. He joined a group of like-minded people, big international drug traffickers from Europe to become one of the biggest super cartels in the world. It is quite unheard of that multiple big drug lords closely worked together in order to smuggle even more cocaine. Each of them had their own expertise and drug trafficking lines, which they bundled together in order to become a super cartel that would control one third of the entire cocaine business in Europe. They also had virtual monopoly on Peruvian coke. Every gram of cocaine produced in Peru would be sold to them. The super cartel the DEA regards this as one of the world's 50 largest drug cartels. Other members of the cartel were Daniel Kinahan, an Irishman, Ridwan Tahi, a Dutchman, and Eden G, who also grew up in the Netherlands. Usually you see the drug lords battle each other for the top spot, but this alliance seek to do it together. Almost all of them resided in Dubai, where they lived as money wasn't a problem. Imperial reportedly spent over 400,000 euros a month in Dubai, to maintain his lavish lifestyle. All of them were already in the sights of law enforcement. The flaunting of the lavish lifestyle they lived up did not help their case. When notorious Irish gangster Daniel Kinahan 
through a wedding in Dubai, Edin G and Raphael Imperiale were among the partying guests. The wedding was held in the prestigious seven-star Burj Al Arab Hotel and was a focus point for investigators to tie the members of the drug cartel together. This direct evidence showed that their assumptions were indeed true. These three men know each other. At the same time, one of the biggest encrypted chat services got hacked by government officials. They obtained hundreds and thousands of messages, some of which were sent to these super cartel members. The messages they sent to each other discussed the prices of cocaine and the arrangements of shipments. After being on the run for several years, it all ended on the 4th of August 2021 in Dubai for Rafael Imperial when he was arrested. His new alias was Antonio Rocco. Dubai was seen as a safe haven for many criminals, as they did not extradite prisoners to other countries and barely did any investigation work into criminal activity. This caused criminals to feel untouchable. However, since a few years, Dubai has been trying to change the image they had of being a safe haven for criminals. Dubai police are putting a lot of work into finding criminals and extraditing them to their own countries. Some of the world's most notorious criminals thought they were safe in Dubai, but were apprehended there as of late. One of those criminals was Tahi, also a member of the super cartel. Imperial was arrested inside of his own residence in the Burj Al Arab Hotel, where he resided as a king and enjoyed all things luxury. In his residence, police found large amounts of cash, expensive and historic paintings, jewelry and several different passports. He spent five months in a prison in Dubai until he was extradited to Italy on the 25th of March in 2022. From being a business partner in one of the biggest drug cartels in the world, to being a crown witness who will be testifying in court against his former associates, that is the story of Rafael Imperial. I do not think anyone would have thought that Mr. Imperial himself would become a crown witness. Shortly after he was sent from Dubai to Italy, he almost immediately struck a deal with Italian prosecutors. It is unclear what the deal exactly was, but Italy has exceptionally strict anti-mafia laws. Members with any type of mafia affiliation are thrown into very harsh jail conditions and have to abide by strict rules while remaining in full isolation. Imperial probably did not like that outlook and has decided to talk. Negotiations probably involved better living conditions and a reduced sentence, but we will most likely never know for sure. Imperial statements can be really valuable for the Department of Justice in Italy, but also in the Netherlands. Because of Tahi, the Department of Justice is eagerly listening to whatever Imperial has to say. They can use that evidence for their case against Tahi. Besides Tahi, a lot of his former associates are sweating too because they obviously do not know what he might say about them. Thus far, he has already issued four statements to the judges. At this point, it is unclear what he has said in those four statements but everyone is aware that he is indeed talking and no one is safe at the moment. So what do you think? Will Imperial bring down all of his former business partners with him? Or will he play it smart, spare them and give minimal information to the judge and still receive a lower sentence? As always, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, like and subscribe and we will see you in the next one.